relatively recently in the Comrade series, they have had post-series movies known as V-Cinemas or v -Cinex, as they are now called. These movies are usually released direct to DVD or Blu-ray, but can sometimes have small theatrical runs. All of these films follow a certain pattern, focusing on either the secondary writer of the Associated series or multiple extra writers from the series proper. And of course, this is a means to give less focused on writers new forms and new toys. Unlike those stage show writers, the VCNX exclusive writers and forms usually are treated pretty well in the toy department. Often the toy used to access this new form or writer is sold alongside the physical release of the film. However, it's not always the case as we will cover in this video. One downside to most of these forms is how little they are seen, most of the time only appearing in the film that they were made for and then never again. A common trait with Visa Next forms is to take a pre-existing suit from the show, repaint it, add some slight remolds here and there, maybe do some kit bashing and repainting of a gimmick item that the main writer used, and BAM! You have made yourself a Visa Next exclusive form. Today we're going to take a look at every V-Cinema slash v -Cinex exclusive rider and form, find out where their suit and transformation item originally came from, and see how the toy line treated them. And with all that out of the way, let's go! The history of V-Cinema starts back at 2009's Kamen Rider Double. Double was a very popular series, so when it ended, fans definitely wanted more. Toei decided to release two post-series films for the series under the titles of Kamen Rider Double Returns, one for Kamen Rider Eternal, and one for Kamen Rider Axel. Eternal's film takes place prior to his first appearance in the Double A to Z film, and is the origin story for how Katsumi became Eternal. However, we come to learn that the original user of Eternal was Jun Kazu, the Utopia Dopant. When Jun uses Eternal, he does so with the T1 version of the memory, meaning it has a silver tip instead of a blue tip, and he assumes the brand new form of Kamen Rider Eternal, Red Flare. This form is an incomplete version of Eternal, as Red Flare takes the original Eternal suit, gets rid of the cape, and all of the extra maximum dry slots. Also, as the name implies, this form takes all of the blue flame patterns on the regular Eternal and paints them red. Kamen Rider Axel's film gave him access to Booster Form, a yellow, flight-capable version of Axel. This was the form that finally gave Axel a proper yellow form to complete his traffic light motif, as previously he was only seen turning yellow during the transformation sequence into Trial. To access this form, Ryu uses the Gaia Memory Enhancer adapter plugged into the Axel Gaia Memory. Booster's entire base suit is a yellow repaint of the original Axel, with a new chest and shoulder armor and a new helmet. Ryu would come to use Booster again though briefly in Movie World Ultimatum which makes it our first V-Cinema form to be used more than one time. Both forms received SH Figure Arts releases back at the time that the movies came out, and have popped up in figure form since a few other times, most recently as Soda figures in the Soda Chronicle double line. The Guy Memory Enhancer version of the Axel Memory was released in a Gashapon format in the Complete Selection EX2 set. Technically, the T1 Silver Tipped Eternal Memory was never released officially, but it did exist as an error in the Complete Selection Modification Lost Driver, in which a replacement was offered to have the proper blue T2 tip. This works though, since in the film the sounds for the transformation are the same, no matter which version or what color tip is used. V Cinemas would not return for O's or Forze or Wizard, but they would finally return in Kamen Rider Gaim. Gaim was an extremely popular series, and soon after the show ended, the Gaim Guidance series was announced. The Gaiden series would be the first in the modern era of V-Cinemas, starting the tradition that continues to this day of at least one post-series movie with a packing gimmick item, also that are announced quite soon after the show is over. First to release at the beginning of 2015 was Gaim Gaiden, Zangetsu, and Baron. The DVD and Blu-ray for the film would come packed in with the deluxe Forbidden Ringo Lockseed and Uden faceplate set. Taboo Ringo is a repaint of the Golden Ringo lock seed used by Kamen Rider Mars in the Summer Soccer movie. In the barren portion of the film, taking a place around the episode 20's range of the series, he would use this lock to assume Ringo arms, which was proven to be his strongest rider form at the time. Ringo is a red repaint of the armor used by Kamen Rider Mars from the same movie, although canonically this film does take place first. The lock seed is destroyed by the end of the film to explain why it is never used again. The Gaim Gaidens decided to explain some of the history behind certain Loxies that were later used later on in the series, 
in the Baron Guide and features the villain rider, Kamen Rider Tyrant. Tyrant uses a prototype of the Dragon Fruit's energy lock seed, which was first used by Duke in Movie War Full Throttle. The only difference in the lock seeds is this version says ELS Proto on the front instead of ELS Hex. But the ELS Proto version was never released in the toy line, but the sounds are the same. Tyrant's suit is basically a Black Baron type undersuit, a remolded dime helmet, and the Dragon Fruit's energy arms that Duke used, but with two of the smaller shoulder pads and the Duke symbol removed. In the Zengetsu Gaiden, the Tabu Ringo lock seed is used for a unique rider known as Kamen Rider Uden. She was, until the most recent Gridon and Bravo Gaiden, the only female user of a Sengoku driver. Her suit uses the same lock seed that Baron uses, but her version of Ringo arms is slightly different, being repainted from Kamuro's armor instead of Mars. She also uses a remolded Kamuro helmet and repainted undersuit as well. Zengetsu of course gets a new form in this movie, Watermelon Arms. Essentially, if Suika was a normal functioning lock seed, it didn't give access to a giant mech suit. Watermelon is a repaint of the base melon arms with a slight remold for a watermelon texture. The lock seat is special though, as it changes all of the gold ends and gets you to red, and also changes the faceplate to match these red accents. While it might make the most sense for this lock seat to be a repaint of Suika, it is actually a repainted mango lock seat. This is where our first premium Bandai items related to the V Cinemas come into play, which will be quite often in this. The lock seat and faceplate for watermelon arms were released as premium Bandai exclusives. The first figures for any of these Gaiden forms were released this way as well, with Arms Change Premium Bandai 08, Baron Ringo Arms, and Zengetsu Watermelon Arms. However, Tyrant and Uden have to this day never received a figure. The Watermelon and Ringo lock seeds are set to be re-released in the Gaim Complete Selection Modification Project, so that is cool to see. Gaim was just so popular though, that a second set of Gaidens came out at the end of 2015 and followed the same sort of pattern. This time, the focus was on Kamen Rider Duke and Knuckle. The DVD pack-in would be the Lemon Lock Seed, a regular instead of energy version of this lock, along with a Duke faceplate for the Sengoku Driver, which introduced the idea of Duke using a Sengoku Driver like Zengetsu did before upgrading to the Genesis. Lemon Arms features the same undersuit as the Genesis version of Duke, but with the driver changed, the back helmet piece, and armor being new, and a new rapier type weapon. The Lemon Lock Seed itself is a repaint slash slight remold of Kiwi. In the Duke half, there is the new Kamen Rider Savior who appears, and he's one of the most crazy kit bashes to date. He uses a Sengoku driver, but instead of having a faceplate, he uses two regular lock seeds via the Genesis core port. One being the already released at the time Blood Orange lock seed from Kamen Rider Bujingaim, and the brand new Zakuro lock seed. Zakuro, or as it's translated into Pomegranate, is a repaint of the Suika lock seed. Ah, so now it gets repainted. Though this was released via Premium Bandai alongside his repainted Sonic Arrow, the Savior Arrow. The suit itself uses most of the Mars suit, again, but painted red this time, given one shoulder pad from the Blood Orange Arms, the back helmet piece is taken away, and they added what looks kind of like duct tape over his mouth. What a suit! Both new locks are set to be released again in the CSM Yggdrasil lock seat set. Kamen Rider Knuckle got Jimba Marin Arms using the Peach Energy repainted Marin Energy Lock Seed, which was released via Premium Bandai alongside a standalone Genesis Core unit. Jimba Marin gives the same Jimba armor that Gaim had, but gives it to Knuckle this time, and adds the Marin design to the suit. A new helmet piece and chestnut fists were added to the suit, but when you take the fists off, they reveal repainted O's Sagozo combo gloves underneath. The Marin Energy Lock Seed is the only one to this day to not have its own associated energy rider besides the Dark Lemon Energy, but it does have a badass transformation doom. <laughs> Knuckle's adversary was Comrade Black Baron, a suit with all of the red painted black this time. And that's really it. His lock seed and face plate were slightly different though, with his banana lock seed having removed the LS08 part and his face plate being black and white. Marin Energy was re released in the CSM Team Baron set alongside the Black Baron slash Proto Baron face plate for the first time, but the Black Baron version of the banana lock seed is still left unreleased even after CSM. All four of these new suits from the second Gaim Gaiden have never received figures. Now technically there is a third Gaim Gaiden that came out in 2020, 
Gridon vs Bravo, which do have new forms and riders, but even though they are part of the series technically, they were released as a Toei Tokusatsu fan club special and not an official V Cinema, so they will be skipped here in this video, but let me know down in the comments below if you'd like a video on those kind of specials. Start your engine. Right after Drive ended, we had the Drive Saga Kamen Rider Chaser V Cinema announced. Unlike Gun Gaiden, this would be a single film focusing on a single rider, and so naturally, Kamen Rider Chaser gets a new form, right? Well no, Machin Chaser did, which I know technically isn't a rider form, but he is in my eyes, and it does fit the mold of a typical V Cinema form for this. This time, the DVD packing was a whole brand new deluxe brake gunner toy, which was able to have a sound for this form, Cho Machine Chaser which is basically Chaser getting a Super Evolution Gold Roymu form. This is accessed with the Rhino Viral Core, which adds a super long blade onto the brake gunner. The suit is painted gold over the purple, with new shoulder pads and a slightly different helmet as well. And now somehow, this form actually got an SH Figuarts release. Look at that! Drive got a second Saga film in 2016, just like Gaiden did, but this time it would focus on two riders in sections like the Gaidens. Kamen Rider Mach and the brand new Kamen Rider Hearts would be the focus of this one. Mach would get the Chaser Mach form, wait no actually sorry, he would get the Mach Chaser form, really changed it up there guys, which was just Chaser Mach but with the Mach pieces painted blue and now he has Chaser eyes underneath the mask. Yeah, well at least the car is new. They ride Crosser Shift Car which was one half of this film's DVD pack-in. It is one of the few shift cars to have electronics inside in order to work correctly in the Mach driver, and is based off of the combined vehicle that is formed by Mach and Chaser's bikes. The other new shift car was Shift Hardaron, used by Kamen Rider Hart. Hart was the first time that a V Cinema was focusing on a brand new rider, and not one already established in the show. The suit is a remold of Drive Type Tridoron, with quite the helmet to say the least. The shift car is also molded after Type Tridoron's shift car as well as with a more monstrous look to it. Now where Shift Trideron could summon the Shift cars, Shift Hardaron changed between the consciousnesses of Heart, Brain, and Medic. Now technically there is another form of Comrade Heart in the film, type Speed Wild Technic, which is a sort of mismatch of these three drive forms. Now while this car wasn't featured in the film, there was a Shift Speed Wild Technic Shift car in the toy line, which was released as a ticket bonus. So technically this is like a suit for this Shift car. In another shocking turn of events like Cho Machin Chaser, both Mach Chaser and the Kamen Rider Heart Type Miracle got SH Figure Art releases. Okay, now there is a Drive Saga Kamen Rider Brain Special, which is a lot of fun, but once again was released as a Toei Tokusatsu Fan Club Special, so I will be skipping it today. Kamen Rider Ghost got the short end of the stick with V Cinemas, as they only got one film, Ghost Story Kamen Rider Spectre. This DVD packing would include the Sin Spectre Ghost icon, which was a remold slash repaint of the Mugen icon, with attacks based on the seven deadly sins instead of the seven emotions like Mugen. Sin Spectre would be Spectre's version of the Mugen Damashi, this time being the same suit done up in his colors with a repainted Gangan hand. The film also featured Kamen Rider Necrom finally getting an upgrade for him with Yujo Burst, a black and gold repaint slash fire remold of Necrom's base suit. The Yujo Burst Ghost Icon, which was repainted from Ghost's Tokum Boost, is left to this day unreleased. Unfortunately, there was never any Necrom V Cinema that could have seen Necrom upgrade to his own Mugen like form, completing all three riders getting three upgrades. With Kamen Rider X Save, they must have had extra budget left over from not giving Ghost two V Cinemas, that they announced a whole trilogy of V Cinemas, or now as they were be titled, V Cin Nexts since at this point they started getting limited theater releases in one go. Kamen Rider X8 Another Ending Trilogy, Brave and Snipe, Paradox with Poppy, and Gemu vs Laser. The Brave and Snipe one didn't give us anything new, so let's go ahead and move on to the Paradox with Poppy, which gave us the brand new rider Kamen Rider Another Paradox, a black evil version of Paradox's perfect knockout level 99 form, which used a monochrome version of the Gashet Gear Duel, which was released on Premium Bandai, as well as the ride player undersuit and a new skirt piece being used for this new suit. Another paradox would actually make a second appearance on screen outside of the special, as one of the riders that were fought by Kamen Rider Brain in his special. In Gemu vs Laser, these are where our main new forms coming from. Laser gets level X by using his Giri Giri Chambara Gashat in the Buggle Driver 2. Nothing new there. 
but his suit is the level 3 suit repainted into this interesting turquoise and black color scheme. Genmu got a repainted suit as well as the God Maximum Gamer Level 1 Billion suit, which was a Genmu cover version of X8's Maximum Gamer Level 99. The gas shaft for this form was the DVD pack and item for the trilogy. Genmu Maximum Gamer got not only an SH figure art, but he was, as of the point of this video, the only V Cinema form to get released in the Rider Kicks figure line, and was the first to be released in the Soto line, during the Soto build line alongside Laser Level X and Another Paradox. From this point on with x aid Soto would make a figure of every single Visa Next exclusive form. Kamen Rider Build brought with it New World Kamen Rider Cross, which had two brand new suits. First up was Cross Evil, which was basically two of the Cross Z sides from the Cross Build suit repainted into a new white color. This form was accessed with the Muscle Galaxy Full Bottle, a repaint of Build's Genius Bottle. The villain for this film was Kamen Rider Kilbus, a red spider based rider using kitbash pieces of Build, Night Rogue, Bloodstar, Mad Rogue, and transformed with a repainted spider foot bottle and a remodeled cross dragon like device. However, this bottle and transformation device were never released in any toy line. Both forms did get Soto figures during the Soto Geo line, and Cross Evil made it to the SH Figure Arts level. In Build's second Visa Next, New World Comrade of Greece, he gained the form Greece Perfect Kingdom, which featured another remold cross dragon like device that was based off of his Hokuto Trio and came with the Grease full bottle to assume this form. Unlike the Kilba Spider, the Perfect Kingdom device was the DVD pack in this time around. The suit is mostly repainted from the base Grease suit with elements of all three of the Hokuto Trio smashes added in for a tribute to those characters. Perfect Kingdom of course got a Soto figure, but it took all the way into the Zero One line to make it happen, and they also got an SH Figure Arts. His villain was Kamen Rider Metal Build. Metal Build is one of the most simplest v X suits ever. It is build Rabbit Tank Hazard, but with two tank eyes this time, both painted black, and two black tank full bottles that were never released. Though what was released was an SH Figure Arts, and being the honor of the final Soto build figure to ever be made, also during the Zero One line. Kamen Rider Geo had only one Visa next, next time Kamen Rider Gates. In this film, Gates gets the Gates Majesty form, which repaints parts of the wizard armor and the shoulder pads from Kamen Rider Zamonus, and then glues all of the ride watches for the secondary riders all over his suit for the equivalent of Grand Geo, and then adds a cape. This form was the first time many of these ride watches were shown in a deluxe quality format, since many of these riders were released in the toy line only in Candy Toy or Gashapon releases. Since this was the only new form to debut in the film, the DVD packing was of course the Gates Majesty Ride Watch, a repaint of the Grand Geo ride watch. But on the Gates version, Gates is added among the other secondary riders, which Geo was not on the Grand Geo ride watch on the sides, because Comrade Kuga was there, and Kuga doesn't have a secondary rider to fill the final slot on the Majesty watch, so Gates is there. Finally, we arrive at the most recent Visa Nexts for Comrade Zero One. In Zero One, others, Comrade Metsubo Jinrai, which just came out, we had the appearance of Comrade Metsubo Jinrai which was a fusion rider form of the four members of Metsubo Jinrai, Hirobi, Jin, Naki, and Ikazuchi. This suit is remolded mainly from the suit of Hirobi, but it does have little touches of the other riders, such as the claws from Kamen Rider Naki. To access this form, the DVD comes with the plates to turn the Zero One driver into the Metsubo Jinrai driver, and the Mass Brain Zetsumurai's key, which is a repaint slash remote of the Arc Zero or Arc Zero One progress key, is used alongside of it. This film also saw Kamen Rider Zaya, a new rider using the Thousand Driver and the Triceratops and Carnotaurus Zetsumurai's keys. Zaya's suit is basically essentially a repaint of Kamen Rider Thouser, but it does have some undersuit and limb pieces from Kamen Rider Arc Zero. Soda figures for each of these forms will be released next month during Book 7 of Saber's line. Both of these suits are also set to appear again outside of this film, surprisingly. Zaya's suit is being repurposed as a form for Kamen Rider Thouser in the upcoming Kamen Rider Genmu's The President special on Toy Tokusatsu Fan Club, and Metsubo Jinrai will return again in the next Zero One Others film, this time focused on Vulcan and Valkyrie. This film will not be released until this fall, but it will be packed in with the deluxe Dire Wolf and Serval Tiger Zetsumurai's key. While at this point we aren't sure what the Dire Wolf key will do for Vulcan, or if it will give him a new form, but Servo Tiger will finally give Valkyrie a proper upgrade form, this time using a lot of repainted slash remolded pieces from her Lightning Hornet form, but it is nice to finally see her get something. 
And that is going to do it for all of the V Cinema slash V Cinex Rider forms up to this point in time. Let me know down in the comments below which ones did you like? Which ones do you think took a suit pre existing already and turned it into something new the best? Thank you all for watching this episode of Toku Topics here. I had a great response to my stage show riders video I did a couple weeks ago, and I definitely wanted to do another video like that again. So let me know, of course, if you guys would like to see more videos like this and suggest other topics for some of them, like either Hyper Battle DVD forums or Toei Tokusatsu special forums, anything of the sorts, just let me know down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching this episode, and until next time, I'll see you all later. Tokusatsu forever.